Welcome. Welcome to a place we haven't ventured to in quite a while, actually. Probably been two years since we've ever stepped foot on this place. Obviously, by the greenery and me speaking and monologuing about this, I'm pretty sure it's easy for you to tell that this is going to be another episode of Dinosaur Island. So, time to introduce you to a new episode, new landscapes, and new dinosaurs in Dinosaur Island. To start off this episode, we will be showing one of the most grim sights on the island. A dry wasteland taken by a forest fire. A forest fire which, well, was caused by the negligence of us scientists. And due to this, many dinosaurs are left wondering where is their home and where is their food. This packy rhinoceros has come to this place to grief, to mourn about its loss. This used to be a bustling place filled with many dinosaurs and wildlife, and now it's just a dry wasteland. It is angry and, well, mostly just sad. This used to be one of the most popular places on the island, and now it's all dried up. Mm. Mm. It begins moving on and leaving this sad memento behind for another day. However, things are not all bad on the island, and sometimes life still flourishes in these, well, drastic situations. A familiar face from a previous episode, episode 5, is a ceratosaur. The same ceratosaur as last time. He is searching through the gra grasslands looking for any prey that might be hiding because this is very thick grass. He's continuing the search, but maybe his search may be cut off by an oncoming predator. Here we see the Paki rhinoceros moving away from the dry wasteland. However, its sorrows will just continue as the ceratosaur has picked it as its prey item. It does not know this, but for now, it'll hide until it's ready to strike. And when it does, things will not go well. All the poor Paki rhinoceros can do is just continue trekking on until it's eminent doom. <laughs> the Ceratosaur is hungry, hasn't eaten an entire day, and is willing to risk it. As it turns out, it was a ceratosaur that died. You might be wondering how it had the element of surprise. Well, it made the dim-witted decision of roaring into battle. The Paki rhinoceros turned around and rammed him in the neck, sniping his neck and slicing his jugular, or more rather, crushing it. You see, the Paki rhinoceros has a sort of hammer-like weapon on its nose that it can use as, well, sort of like a sledgehammer or a hammer. And it used it to crush its jaw and its neck, causing it to bleed out and die. The Paki rhinoceros goes over to the carcass and steps on its neck to make sure it dies. <laughs> and roars in victory. <laughs> However, with the death of such a ginormous creature, in fact, a really big creature, comes the lives and the presence of many scavengers. <laughs> Dimorphodon. Although you can't really see it in this dark light, this is a Dimorphodon. Like a scav it's like a vulture version of a pterodactyl. Small and only scavenges for food and rarely ever hunts. <laughs> in this tough time, you can take what you can get. And it's not very uncommon for many other dinosaurs to go scavenging. 
However, the smell of fresh blood is attacking, attracting a lot of predators, so he must move fast before he gets spotted. He takes one last bite and flies off. We have turned on some special lights so we can see it a little better. But continuing off the story of the panky rhinoceros, we see him moving back to his base. However, the noises it's making is going to attract a lot of predators. We continue on the Packy Rhinoceros' trail as it continues on. It eventually comes to a stop. It seems very tired and very weak. There's no way you can trek all the way back to its base, especially in these conditions when it's very cold out. It goes over to a patch of greenery. You can hear the tiredness in its voice. It collapses down, resting itself for the night. But resting is the worst thing it could have ever done. Cause then, the Dilophosaur finally reaches its track and sees the seemingly lifeless Pachy Rhinoceros on the ground. This will be an easy kill. All it can really do is just snap its neck. And so it does. <laughs> The poor creature didn't even know what was coming for it. It tears out its jugular and swallows it whole. It is very cold out now tonight. And the only way you can see itself warming itself up is by slitting the stomach open and laying next to it. This is because many dinosaurs actually have a lot of warmth inside of their bodies. But the Dilophosaurus is not going to go for that yet. He wants to eat this meal. We will end this episode off as it's getting very late, but we will continue this series and we are back for more seasons and more episodes of Dinosaur Island. <laughs>